what the Church of Scientology is so afraid of. This, this is, is SPTV. Welcome back, everybody, to SPTV, where every day is a great day for David Miscavige to suck it. Um, <laughs> uh, did you mute yourself, I love that Nora? you're just trying a new oh, one every day. It's great. <laughs> I think it's great. <laughs> Uh, okay, everyone, my special guest today is uh, my good friend, Nora Ames. Oh, no, Nora, let me show everyone your YouTube channel real quick. hey -o. Uh, If you're not That's already me. That's my forehead. <laughs> Inside, culty scoop from the outside. I like that. That's right. Um, yeah, so if you're not already subscribed to Oh No Nora, go ahead and check that channel out. It's fantastic. We're here today. Yeah. We're here today to talk a little bit about um, the Scientology trafficking lawsuit uh, against a Sea Org recruiter named Gavin Potter. Um, yeah. The lawsuit also names David Miscavige personally as an individual. As an individual. Um, this one is named, spicy. Yeah. I mean, it is. It is. It is. It is a spicy suit. I mean, because Gavin. If you ever, I mean, did you ever know Gavin? Did you ever interact with him when he came back? Because he was there and then he was not there and then he was back and then, you know. Well, because I was uh, a Seerg member at Asho, and mm -hmm. I, my recollection is that when I was in the Seerg in LA, Gavin and his wife were, I really thought they were uh, working for the Freewinds office. I really yes. thought they were at working that, for the when you by the time you got there, they were like the dynamic power twins for getting people to the free winds. They were like, pow, you know, and they were the super S method. To, that's the coin, the the term we coined at Celebrity Center for the S the S method. Um what does that the, mean? You guys didn't use that at Asho because not no insult to Asho people. You're very good looking, but there's not there wasn't a staple of extremely good looking people at Asho. Um, let's be honest. And you guys had those. Uh, you guys changed the uniforms up a little bit, but you had those horrific like cow tongue ties that were just awful. The uniforms were awful, and mostly they looked like you know the leftover class a sea org you know uniforms it was like sad panda uniforms for asho so you know you guys didn't look like bumping like you know bridge had their like you know they were in suits and they were like look at us we're just like making cash money we're floating around with all our cash and living in apartments and we're like living large look at us we got money and then you know celebrity center we were just so fucking snobby like look at us we get to hobnob with celebrities come be here with the cool kids you know we're cooler than everybody and then the upper echelon people were like look at us we're like we're right next to david miscavige you can't talk to us you can't sit with us you know we had everybody had their own thing and then it was like we're asho uh. <laughs> yeah asho <laughs> was like the redheaded stepchild course yeah. yeah, basically. I mean, basically, it was like we do the briefing course. Well, yeah, because and everyone like, was like, "So what?" When you have so many Sea Org organizations so <laughs> close to each other, you had CC. I know it was sad, but see, from like a technical viewpoint for the audience who is like, "Who cares about these things?" From a technical viewpoint for Scientology, that should have been amazing, right? Like that you're delivering the most extensive most important course that Scientology can deliver uh, that like gives you the entire history of Scientology from A to Z that like L. Ron Hubbard gave his most important lectures on like hand feeding you Scientology and making you the most important auditor on the planet. And we were like, eh, like go sit in the corner. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's so gross. Like, that's yeah. how we thought. Like, we just ranked people, you know, like, oh, uh, uh, and it was like, you know, even AO people were like, oh, you got OT levels. So what? Like, uh. yeah, that was the thing. Celebrity centers where everybody really well, wanted to be. And that's where, let's be honest, they wouldn't let you be a Seerg member at the Celebrity Center if you were ugly. That's just a no! fact. Oh, yeah. if you were, if you were, you went to one of two places, either to, as I jokingly refer to, the basement people. OK, the basement people who like wrote letters out and stuff like that, or they were like in somehow like, you know, just doing like administrative stuff, the basement people or the manor hotel. And you were scrubbing toilets and like cleaning the hotel rooms. 
Yeah. Oh, that's true. I forgot Celebrity Center had right. its own crew org. Right. You don't think about those because they keep them in the basement and, you know, right. in in the bathrooms. Um, yeah, that would be like a real kind of one of the ultimate insults is to send you to CC, but to be in the crew org. Although right. you still had better birthing than everyone else, even if you were in this. The, they call it the manor, the manor crew. The manor. Yeah. So it was yeah. two different orgs. So you had Celebrity Center and then you had the manor hotel. And so that would be the big insult is they would recruit a lot of people from other countries. I mean, talk about trafficking. They would recruit people from other countries and give them big promises. Are oh, you going to be an auditor? You're going to be a CS. You're going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to train you and then we're going to send you back to your country and we're going to clear that country. We're going to open a celebrity center in that country, you know, some tiny, tiny country. And then they end up, you know, cleaning hotel rooms. They're a maid. Their yeah. butler for somebody. It was awful. One of the funniest things about um, CC in general is how anti LGBTQ Scientology is, and oh yet they God. put, and yet they put Dave Pettit as the commanding officer of the Celebrity Center, who's quite obviously one of the most deeply closeted men who has ever existed. His shorts were the shortest shorts I've ever seen on a male human that was not like getting ready for their own drag show, like somewhere, <laughs> like just. Yeah, it's amazing like, that Miscavige no. allows uh, David Pettit to continue to um, have the position that he does. It ha can only be because David Pettit makes so much damn money for Scientology. It makes it, like I've said it before it, it, at Celebrity Center, the and it's probably gone up since I left in the early 2000s. But if we did not make one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars per week. Per week, not per month, not per quarter, $125,000 every week, guys, um, we did not eat. And by eat, I mean anything other than beans and rice, okay, for the entire next week for meals. So, um, and that's at the Celebrity Center, okay, where we had a kitchen that was like as big as the room I'm in right now, which is like a bedroom. Um, somehow they cranked out meals for the, the hundreds of staff that worked there. Um, and, uh, it was ridiculous that we had a $2,000 budget to feed the nearly 500 staff between the celebrity center and the manor that worked there. $2,000 per month would feed all of those people, which yeah. is nuts. Yeah. I think it was, was it Mark Headley who, who did a calculation one time and said like the state of California spends more money per meal on per prisoner in their system than the than the Sea Org does. <laughs> easily. Easily. Easy. Yeah. That is easy math. That is easy math. I mean, we used to when we owned the Wilcox, which Lara went into on her video on um like where she was born and everything else. Many Sea Org members have been born um at the Wilcox um and everything else. And now it's a bougie hotel that people have to pay hundreds of dollars a night, which just blows my mind. Um I I mean I can't because they we sold were, it, right? Someone else owns it. No, we Celebrity Center sold that. I broke that down in one video where Celebrity Center, um, you know, this is where Dave Pettit like got the upper hand on in management and part of. And I would love one day for you to do the numbers on the real estate screen um, because you're so good at like breaking down these numbers. You're you're a whiz with the with the maths. Um, but like one of the things that people don't realize about Scientology is is the real estate scam that's behind it. Right. Um, with the int landlord and everything else. But like super briefly, like they this the scam that they run on the public, right? Where they they do the donation drive because we're we're getting a new building, we're gonna improve the building, everybody donate your money. And they hold these like seminar things where they get everybody to come in and they donate bajillions of dollars to to buy the new building, right? So once they purchase the new building, then they have to renovate it. Then there's another donation drive to renovate the building, which is all done with like you know, internal labor. They don't hire an outside contractor. They they get all the furniture, blah, blah, blah. So now the building's renovated and they finally move in and they're delivering services to three people at this stupid building. But as you and I both know, because we've been part of these groups that have to plan the budget, right? Because I was on the... Um, one of the committees to plan the uh, the food, you know, the the meal planning like committee. Mm. Um, you get a, like a glimpse of the budget that way. Um, so uh, part of the budget then goes to your rent to int landlord every month. Now, 
what's suspicious about this is the building was purchased with public funds that they fundraised, and the renovation was paid for with these public funds. But now somehow you have a mortgage that you're paying to int landlord, this mysterious force up here in international management that you owe a mortgage now to international landlord, even though this building is paid for in full and the renovations were paid for in full. You now owe this lump sum to this international landlord for X number of years that actually never gets paid off because it's like this huge amount of money. So what Dave Pettit did is he created a secret slush fund, which I don't know how he did, but he put aside 10% of the, the money secretly for years in this like secret way where it was like he was still tithing all the things he was supposed to tithe to gold, to RTC, to everybody, and just was like, boop, 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 hiding this money in the secret account away from all the eyes. And before they could do anything about it, he paid off the Wilcox with cash. And he, and at the same time, he paid off the debt to Int Landlord in full with cash. Just double wham, boom. So then Celebrity Center was the only org on the planet that fully owned their birthing and their org that they were sitting in. And Int Landlord lost their mind because now he had all the power because he owned these things outright. So now he was like, well, I'm going to sell this building because he knew how much it was worth in real life because it was costing him all this money. Now the cost of birthing, everybody went down from all these X number of dollars to 10 cents a night to birthing us. It was insane. And so then That's they incredible. sold that building, bought it, and they slowly started buying up all the buildings around Celebrity Center. And now they have their own, they're like trying to mimic flag in having their own complex around them. They almost own every single tiny apartment building around Celebrity Center now. So they can have their own like little, you know, uh, extra rooms for clients and other people, but mostly for the Sea Org birthing. And then they don't have any public spaces around them for public to see at. They kicked out all of the Scientologists that used to live around there for years. Wow, It's insane. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Celebrity Center and David Pettit have a way to make money that um, has been unmatched in any other organization in Scientology. And that's why that's why Dave Pettit is still there. Um, Oh, yeah. Okay, so about this trafficking lawsuit, uh, I'm going to continue to have as many conversations as possible with different people who have experienced this. Let's talk about Gavin. Yeah, of being very aggressively recruited into the Sea Org as a child using fear techniques, using flirting techniques, um, honey potting, you know, whatever. What was your experience either in general or specifically with Gavin being recruited? Um, well, I got recruited many times from pretty much every branch, starting at a very young age. That was my dad's thing when I would go visit him in Los Angeles um, during the summertime. He would bring me at some point to some branch of the Sea Org uh, to present me like a cotillion. <laughs> like, here is my daughter. What can you offer her? <laughs> and then, like, you know, like it was his it was his wish that at some point in my life, I joined the Sea Org. And this is where, you know, as, um, you know, uh, as deep as my mom was in Scientology, the one thing, I mean, they were divorced since I was eight, but like the one thing that she had a massive rule on, and I lived with her primarily, uh, was that I was never joining the Sea Org until I, you know, was an adult and I could make basically make that decision for myself and that I needed to finish like public high school and get an education. So every time this happened where I would like, you know, get hypnotized by the recruiters of like, this is your destiny. Oh, you know, like whatever happened in the recruitment cycle, my mom would just be like, I, not today, Satan. Like, I don't think so. And she would like, you know, put the hammer of Florida. I think they had a file on her like, oh God, Kathy's calling like, ah. And they would just, you know, back off. Um, So she saved me from joining pretty much every time until I was 18. And I called her at the middle of work and I was like, you can't stop me now. And then she did it. And and then I got stuck. And I think in a way I was hoping she was going to stop it. Um, And we had a big falling out. That was that was a terrible day. Um, 
But on the specific day that I got thrown in front of Gavin, um, he laid it on pretty thick. I mean, he used to, you know, I mean, he had his hair all slicked and he used to just like, as soon as you walked in the room, it was like his whole demeanor would just like change, like, you know, like your parents there. So he's very proper, you know, like, hello, sir, you know, oh, yes, I'm Mr. Potter, you know, and like would just introduce himself in this very like, boom, boom, you know, like, I'll take it from here. And then as soon as your like parental unit would leave and he's like alone with you, it would become like very like, listen, you know, I want to just get very personal and, you know, like very touchy. Um, you know, so it became like, uh, you know, very complimentary. Like I was, you know, the first time I met him, I was 14, 15 and, um, you know, immediately he's, it, it's just, uh, it's, it's a lot of stuff that like it, at the time I wasn't aware of like grooming techniques. I was, you know, like 15. So I was a young lady, um, I had long hair. I was, you know, young and cute. So there was like a lot of compliments. So I felt flattered. This guy was older. Um, you know, I wasn't aware of like red flags. Do you know what I mean? So like if an older, you know, good looking guy is like, wow, you're really, you know, you're very smart, you know, you're very attractive, you know, with like a hand on the shoulder and things. This is like, oh, you know, this is, this is feeling like this is something that is, you know, exceptional. Like I am feeling very special, you know, and it's also like weird, but because of the time period too, like, I also want to emphasize like, Hey, none of this is okay. Obviously, like if this were happening to my daughter right now, I would like burn all the buildings down. And like I had to have a talk with her last night because we went to our pool and she walked out of the clubhouse with nothing but her towel on and her bikini top. And there were four teens there her age who all turned like, you know, their necks almost broke watching her. And she had no idea. Like none. She's 16 and they're all about the same age. And she had no idea that these boys were looking at her. And I was like, honey, did you not see? Like I was like in full dad mode, like, excuse me, like ready to jump out of my, my, my lounge chair, ready to strike. And she just is like going about her business, like, -loo 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 -loo. and we were like, oh my God. And I was like, did you not see those four guys looking at you? She's like, no, I didn't notice. I had no, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, and I was like, oh my God, like, I got to put some bubble wrap on this girl. Like she has no idea what's going on. And you know, so I have to have like several talks with her about stuff like that. But at the time, like she just walks through life, like confident, you know, and things like that. She doesn't even think about these things because she's not, she's not interested. I was of course trying to seek attention everywhere. If I saw a cute guy, I was like, hi, how are you? Hello, please notice me. I would like to be noticed. And I was desperate for that because I was trying so hard at the time really to just like not be gay. So Anytime a guy would like look at me, if it was an older guy, younger guy, whatever, just any guy, um, I was like, yes, I can make that happen. So this attention from Gavin was like, you know, I thought, okay, this is a potential, you know, person that I could, you know, uh, you know, like the things that he was saying were like, you know, we could, we could make a great team together in the Sea Org and we would, we would like clear the planet together, you know? And it's like, he starts creating and crafting this dream for you of like you and him together as like a team. And I imagine that, you know, his current wife, Alexandra, who I also mentioned, like I knew her at Celebrity Center later um when i was the word clear i word cleared her and um she's one of the people that I, I haven't been able to reach out to personally like i've tried to reach out to pretty much everybody that i ever worked with you know in some way shape or form at celebrity center um to you know like take responsibility and own my part in their scientology you know journey um but um you know like the day that she joined the Sea Org, uh, she came to me and she said, listen, I want to, I want to thank you because you're the reason that I'm joining the Sea Org. And like, I had tried to recruit, like I had gotten told to recruit her at one point and it, it didn't go well. Like 
And I was like, well, what, what do you mean? I, and I got excited for a second because like, you know, we all had quotas to recruit people, even people in the course rooms. Um, and she had, she had turned us down and she goes, yeah, I'm arriving at the ship. And I was like, what, why are you thanking me if you're going to the ship? Like I was pissed. <laughs> and I was like, what, why are you thanking me? What's what I, I'm, I'm confused. And she's like, yeah, well, you remember when we did that, um, M nine of keeping Scientology working. And I was like, yeah, I totally remember that. It took like forever. Yes. I recall. Um, but yeah. And she's like, yeah, that was when I realized that I it, joining the Sea Org was my destiny. And it's because of you that I'm joining the Sea Org. And I was like, but you're not joining here at Celebrity Center and you're an actress. Like, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> like, oh, so you, you sort of, um, <clears throat> you loosen the lid and then Gavin came along and, and opened it oh, up well, all the way. Yeah. And there's also like, if you, <clears throat> I guess Tori's put out a lot of stuff about this, like originally back in the day about Gavin um, on message boards, like years ago about Gavin um, warning people, like, don't let, you know, your kids get recruited by him, um, and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's numerous people who have put out stuff about what happened to Alexandra behind the scenes, um, that I was unaware of about how he had like, you know, regged her into oblivion. And then she kind of didn't have like a choice except for to kind of join the Sea Org with him, um, after she lost all her money getting regged uh, for all these, you know, like un unnecessary services um, at the free winds and things, you know, cause she was on the rise as an actress at the time. She had been in some major movies. Yeah. What was her maiden like name again? Um, Powers, Alexandra Powers. She was in um, dead poet society. She had been in like, she was on, she was like trajectory wise. She was going like this and she's a good actress. You know what I mean? She, had she kept at it, she could have kept going um, acting wise. But because she got more sucked into Scientology than like, you know, working on her craft um, and doing more acting, um, you know, she she didn't continue. And then she got sucked into, you know, um, that. I mean, there's there's a number of other people that that's happened to uh, like uh uh, Kelly Hedden is a great example. She's a she's a kid who was in CC Kids on stage for a better world. Okay, she was not. She's born into Scientology. She was not a Sea Org cadet or anything, but this girl sings like Kelly Clarkson. Okay, she makes singing look like she's drinking drinking a glass of water. I've just since she was like seven years old, I've been blown away by this girl's voice. And her mom was a singing coach and coached the CC kids on stage for a better world, did all this stuff. And I remember thinking the first time I heard her sing like chills in my in my body, just how amazing her voice was. And I thought this girl is going to be the next Whitney Houston, just like amazing. She finally gets a contract with Sony, like a real contract for for an album and everything. And then what happens next? She's recruited for gold to become a gold singer. And that's where she is now. Really? Yeah. Is she the tall, skinny, white one with the dark hair, the long, dark hair? Yes. yes. Oh, I've ha she doesn't even sing in Scientology stuff, does she? She just like a backup dancer. Barely. Yeah, she's a backup singer now at gold. They stole her entire career. She had a, she had a legit, legit contract with sony the hmm. second she made it snatched her and put her in the sea org hmm. wow. and i don't know why her mom let that happen she was still a minor her mom protected her from every sea org recruiter on the planet and then the second that happened she was snatched up by gold wow for nothing for nothing was... because she's going to save the planet singing wow it's it's insane. It's insane to me. It's insane to me the things that the things that happen to people when they are on the the like this close to actual success, you know, and they, they just like crush it away from them. Except for the few people who are somehow like allowed to have success. Um, you know, out of the celebrity center or they come in already pre-successful. 
You know what I mean? And then they just keep pumping up um, that success somehow. But it's, it it's is weird. It is weird and, for for a, a, for a group that is so, so heavy on its use of celebrities and is known for how it uses its celebrities. But it's, when it's when it's when it's young members actually <laughs> want to say that their goal in life is to become a really successful musician or a really successful actor. They're basically yeah. told what a ridiculous pos purpose that is how it's garbage yeah. how it's unethical how it's selfish how it's all this stuff and you're like wait what well, i thought that was kind of your thing no but they they don't want their members using it as an excuse not to join the sea org well you can you can give you can give scientology one of three things you can give them your time and give them your money or your talent and if somehow scientology deems that you are really talentless you're going to give them your time or your money and if you don't have money you're going to give them your time and that's it. Those are the three things you can give Scientology. If you don't come prepackaged with actual monetized talent, okay, yeah, then then go fuck yourself. You're going to give us your time and your money. And if you don't have a ton of money, you're going to give us your time. Yeah. And that's it. And that's one of the reasons a lot of these Scientology parents, uh, even if they feel a little weird about it, will – allow their kid to join this yoga, even push them for the monetary reasons. They now don't have to support that kid. They now don't have to pay for that kid's Scientology. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even still, because there are still basic. Scientologists who are very much against their kids joining the sea or just because of that natural. And most of those, most of those people who are, it is a split though. Most of the people who are anti their kid joining staff or the sea org are ex staff, but it's a split because some people who are ex staff get more pressure. Oh, Toby, get more pressure to have their kid join. You know what I mean? Go on. Go get him. Five. My dog got dog got cranky. Um, so you know what I mean? And then they, those guys get their, what then ends up happening is the ex staff that say, uh, uh, not my kid get their entire future threatened, right? Like, Oh, we see, this is why you left staff because you're, you know, uh, you know that because you're actually a real SP. So we know where you're at. And then they have to, they eventually get pressured into it. They backed off my mom only because she was ex guardian's office and they knew she knew too much shit. So like they were like, well, she knows too much. So we're going to just let her have a hard pass <laughs> and uh, we'll just leave it at that. Like, was Gavin, was Gavin Potter the first person to try and recruit you for the Sea Org? No, the first time let's think about that. The first time I got hardcore recruited probably was when I was eight. It was a dual recruitment for the San Francisco org staff and then also the Sea Org at the same time because there was a Sea Org recruiter at the San Francisco org, like on a mission. So I was yeah. eight. How would they recruit And somebody you at, actually at had me eight. sign a staff contract at the San Francisco org. Yeah. Were they expecting you to arrive? Oh, 100%. Oh, for real? <laughs> oh, yeah. What were you supposed yeah. to do at eight? They, 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 first of all, they wanted me to be in the registrar's office because they thought I was such a great salesperson. Like here I was not even four feet tall. Okay. I'm an eight year old, not even like close to looking like even prepubescent. I'm eight. You have to picture somebody who looks like a five year old because at eight, I looked five. I was so tiny. Um, I wish I had a picture of me at eight. It's ridiculous. But my conversation skills were fire. Okay. Um, so I could have like manned a phone. Uh, people used to think I was my mom when I was on the phone at eight. Uh, so they probably would have just stuck me on the phone doing like phone regging. Um, I could have sold anything over the phone. I'm sure. I could have just like been calling out. Boom like doing it. I mean, you guys have to understand my childhood was a lot wackadoodle. Um, when my dad was a cabbie, he used to put me in the front of his cab at night. And then I would just turn around and like talk to the passengers 
<laughs> like chat them up. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, where are you from? Oh, you guys just flew in from Chicago? Wonderful. How was your flight? Great. Wow. Did you guys have any drinks this evening? Fantastic. <laughs> what was that like? Oh, you came from the bar? Excellent. Where are you headed? To a hotel? Together? Great. That's wonderful. Are you guys together? Oh, you're on a date. Fun. Like, <laughs> I used to get so much tips. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so d uh, did you arrive at eight as a staff no. member? Well, my mom <laughs> lost. She tore up the contract in front of the person. She told them she literally lost her shit in the middle of like, the lobby there like she tore it up in front of their face and threatened the person who handed like i signed the contract she tore it up in front of their face and told them if they ever handed me a contract again she was going to murder them like i told you my mom's legendary like she can't like don't no she was they almost called hco bring order on her and for those people who don't know what that is okay if somebody that's probably something aaron's ever even said on his channel so if, if there's like if you were to pull a fire alarm, which I, you know, th orgs actually have fire alarms. Don't, don't think they don't. But if you were to pull what the equivalent of a fire alarm is in an org, if somebody yells HCO bring order, which stands for Hubbard communications office, you have basically just yelled like, there's a shooter. There's like a, there's a, there's a robbery going on. There's like a, there's a disaster drill. Basically you're telling everyone in the org, some shit's going down and we need all hands on deck. Everybody come here right now because some BS is happening. We need to take somebody out. And yeah. Oh no. My mom's been in the middle of that before. Some guy who was like a supervisor tried to push her down the stairs when we were on the student hat. And they had to call H. So bring order on him on the supervisor guy, because he literally got into a verbal argument with my at the San Francisco org when we were students there. Cause she was like, not today. Yeah. It was a whole thing. No, my mom doesn't take any shit. I mean, I would have her on my channel and interview her, but it would just be, we would, the two of us together, two spot. Aaron's talked to my mom. Aaron and my mom have she gotten should come on. Oh, me and your mom uh, know each other very well. well. You guys are cool, but like back in the day, like, you know, you know my mom, when she gets fired up, don't yeah. don't get her started. That's like, I mean, you know. she was a student and I was the tech yeah. sec, so it's not like, I mean, yeah. we knew each other, we spoke to each other, but I wasn't yeah. responsible for anything no. she, no, you no. know, supervising her or anything. No, but you know, I mean, like when my mom got spicy, that's it. Like she's not, she didn't hold back. She's got no filter. This woman, she's 75 now. She's got no fucks. Like, <laughs> shit. have you never interviewed her on your channel at all? No. Oh my God. No, I can't because she just like, she just has, there's just no filter. There's no, I can't, you know, I'd have to like have like a 25 music lead in or something before I. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, that's funny. It's painful. It's really painful for her. I mean, I'll be honest with you. It's, it's talking about it. Like she and I can talk about it and we BS about it sometimes. But like I showed her Catherine's book as an example. And I was like, mom, you should read this. It's, I think it's really, really good. And she was like, what is this? And she read the title. I was like, read the back. It tells you, you know, obviously the back of the book tells you what it's about. And she read like one sentence and she looked at me and she's like, Catherine was a red shirt. And then she just started bawling. And I was like, oh my God. And she goes, and then she told me this story of like something that happened in front of her when like a group of, you know, the cadets were in front of her and she just started bawling. And she's like, I just, every time I saw those kids, it just, it crushed me. It broke my heart. And it's just like, think like memories like that for her just kill her because seeing kids who weren't with their parents and stuff just absolutely like crushed her. Like she just... Like thinking that Catherine grew up that way, like she just, it like murders her, you know, like she's, she's probably not going to read Catherine's book just because like, she will just like, she can't. So some things for her are just like, like, it's so painful. Um, 
But thinking about other things, you know, like it'd be interesting to get her perspective. But one thing, the other reason why I don't is like, you guys, thank you so much. I see the supportive comments and stuff, but some things like, you know, like sometimes when we're talking, she says some things and I have to call her out on it, but like some people's comments, you know, I just don't want her, you know, like I, I have to do it. So she couldn't see any comments. Cause you know, some people would be like, what, you know, cause she's been around since the seventies. So her, her roller coaster ride was, you know, it's a journey. It's been yeah. a journey. But it would be so, fun. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it one day. It'd be a very long conversation. I mean, yeah. I imagine they weren't using the normal Gavin Potter recruitment techniques when you were eight, were they? No, nobody used any sex techniques on me then. It just, they tried to make it sound super fun. Um, so, like, from an eight year old perspective, it was more like it was all about saving the world. It was just like being superhero. I think that's the main theme in the recruitment is that you're going to save the universe and we're on the team of like save the planet um, and helping. Help, 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 help. Um, that has always been the go-to button for me as a person because I'm a helper. Um, I'm somebody who is, you know, if and you know me, um, if any of my friends ever need help or they are, you know, in distress or something, I'm always the person that's like, what's up? You know, um, that's just my nature. And people find that out about me pretty early on. And that's always been my nature. Even when I was a little kid, um, I'm always somebody who's helping out wherever I can. So they, they, you know, that's the drill in Scientology. They find out your, um, they find out your ruin. And they also find out what is your go button. They find out both ends of the spectrum about you, right? What makes you sad and what makes you tick, right? And so they use those um, against you constantly. They use them to motivate you and they use them to keep you in the, in the group um, always. So when they know that for me personally, like my go button is help, um, <clears throat> and my fear button is, uh, like, I feel like I'm a phony, right? Like, I feel like I'm not good enough. And so like, they would keep me in the group by lying to me and telling me that I can't help anyone outside of this group. Right. I can't. That's how they kept me in the Sierra all these years. Like if I leave, I will never be able to help anyone. Um, truly I will be hurt and I'll be hurting everybody here, uh, by leaving and I'll be hurting all of mankind by leaving. And then the other thing, you know, the opposite is that I will be found out as a true criminal, like that it'll be revealed. Obviously it's not true, but all of the things that I have inside of me that I know that are real facts about me that are, you know, um, these bad thoughts that they, they will be revealed to everybody that I'm actually just a big flop and that's going to come to light. And, you know, everybody's going to know what's, you know, that, that will be then played out in real life, you know, and, and, yeah. and then they just keep playing you against yourself essentially for all of time. Um, and that's what they do in recruitment. But then as you get older um, and you're mature, then they can get into like that S method type thing where they get you, you know, either somebody your own age, like Brandon Faust, because we were both teens or Gavin, who's an older, you know, attractive guy who can tell you that you're very pretty and that, you know, um, you know, even though you want to have babies, uh, you know, it's better to help the babies that are already here and you know all this other stuff or at the time having babies in the sea org wasn't uh you know frowned upon you could still have a baby in the sea org when i was being recruited but you would just you know go on garrison mission for 10 years at a luxurious class 5 organization and then come back <laughs> <laughs> um before we wrap it up let me read off for everyone the list of names that i currently have for sea org recruiters well, don't People add me on there i'm also i was a recruiter for a little bit were you really? That was my first post. I told them when they recruited me at Celebrity Center, I said, I'll do any job. I will even clean the toilets. I just don't want to be a recruiter. And they were like, oh, absolutely not. We're definitely not making you a recruiter. And then that was my first job, guys. Oh, my God. I was awful. I think I recruited like 
two people maybe. <laughs> I was so a here's the list. Recruiter. Here's the list that I have. Let us know in the comments section <laughs> if you can remember any other recruiters in which orgs they were at and when. So we have Gavin Potter, Nick Christensen, Jimmy Page, Brandon Faust, Brandon Faust, Cherie Bloomfield, Danica Shaw, Tashanya Faust, Tyber McCormick, Matt DeRine, Valentino Bonacore, Quinn Toffer, Tarl Kuhn, Noam Agosi, and Aaron Saxton is on this list, even though I don't know if Aaron Saxton was a recruiter. I didn't know Aaron Saxton. I don't know if he was an actual recruiter. Um, he was at the <laughs> HDB and stuff. He knew my dad. But I don't know if he did a lot of recruiting. He might have. Um, I could tell you the story when I tried to recruit Kate Seberano and I got in big trouble. Oh, I bet. Did you not know she was a celebrity? No, I had no idea who she was. I was just getting screamed at because I wasn't recruiting enough people. And so there she was just like minding her own fucking business, eating in the cafe, just, you know, being Kate Sebrano, you know, just blah, 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 blah. So I sat down next to her and I was like, do it. You know, I had like a little checklist thing, you know, like a little form to fill out. So I asked her to fill out the form. So she filled it out like she's so nice. She just fills it out. And it said on there, one of the things was like, are you like a first or second gen Scientologist or something like that? And so she had to write in i'm a third generation scientologist so i'm like re you know i get it back from her and um i'm reading off the thing and i was like wow you're third generation i'm a second generation scientist you're a third generation scientist wow wow tell me about that so she's telling me about her family and all this stuff and she's from australia i was like oh, australia i'd love to go there that's amazing blah 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 and we're like vibing i'm having this great interview with her and i was like wow what do you do for a living because i have no idea who this woman is just none she's like oh i'm a singer i was like singing oh wonderful wow what are you saying you know like she is just like a pleasure to talk to because she's just like, this girl has no clue who I am. All right, great. I'm going to go with it. Right. So we're just talking. And so I'm like, so as a third generation Scientologist, like, how come you aren't in the Sea Org, like here with me? Like, don't you feel like a, you know, like a call to like, you know, we come back and like be a part of the group and like all this stuff. Like I'm hard selling her. I'm in it. I'm just in it to win it. And she was just like, yeah, you know, sometimes I really feel like that. Like my aunt actually works at the CLO here. And I was like, really? She does? And I was like, that's your oh, aunt? Oh, that's right. Like, I forget right? what was her aunt's name. Her aunt was, um, oh, shit. All right. I can't remember. She was the, the LRH PPRO West yes! US. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know exactly what I'm talking about. She was super cool, right? Yeah. And so yeah. – um. I was like, that's your aunt. Oh my God, she's amazing. And then I was like, I can't believe you're not working with your aunt. Like, what's up with that? And she's like, well, you know, I just have this greater purpose to like, you know, help all of Australia with my singing. And I was like, but you know, LRH says an OT can't do it alone. Like, why are you just doing this all, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like giving her everything. And she's like, yeah, you know, it's just, that's just what I'm doing right now and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well, okay. And then I just walked away and I came back in the recruitment office and I just, throw the survey down and I'm pissed. I'm like this bitch. Like, <clears throat> and I'm just having a whole fit. And my senior who I'm trying to remember his name, who was the dir rap at the time, the director of routing and personnel. He's like, what are, you, what are you talking about? And I was like, yeah, this girl, she's a third gen. She won't join. He's like, what's her name? I'm going to, uh, you better get back out there. And I was like, no, nah, she's just, you know, she blew me off. She's a singer or something from Australia. He's like, what is her name? I was like, Kate Severano, whoever that is. He's like, are you joking right now? I was like, no, <laughs> she's said, who cares? He's like, you were just talking to Kate Severano. You recruited her for how long? What did you say? And I'm, now I'm like, why am I getting interrogated? This woman is so irresponsible. She's so out of ethics. He's like, you better go apologize right now. You go apologize. And I was like, why am I apologizing? She's a, she's not even joining. You know, he's like, she's a celebrity. Do you know who you're talking to? I was like, what? I never heard of her in my whole life. <laughs> and he just like read me the riot act. So then I go back out there. She's of course not there. She's gone now. And I'm like, oh my God, I am, I'm dead. I'm, that's it. I've lost, I've lost my mind. Reala plane. There's another one. Um, uh, and I, so now I have to go into the president's office. Okay. I walk into the president's office. She's talking to the president about the recruitment cycle that just occurred mm -hmm. in the cafe. And I'm like, Oh, hi. Hi. Remember me? And she's like, oh, there she is. This is the girl. This is the girl that was recruited. Come here. 
come here, come here. I want to introduce you to the president. I was like, oh no, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> I know her. Yes. Hi. Hi. That's me. And the president's like, oh yes. She was just telling me about this recruitment cycle that you did on Kate. This is come on over. Nora. <laughs> come on over. Let's talk about it. Yeah. And I was like, yes. Oh, I'm so Miss Severano. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, hello. I was. I do apologize. Um, I'm sorry. We haven't formally become acquainted. Um, that was a test. You passed. Just kidding. I was just testing you. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> Shay, embarrassed. <laughs> okay. You're fantastic. Keep doing what you're doing in Australia. We love you. <laughs> so great. <laughs> I was just like, what do I say? She's like, I just want you to know you are amazing. And if I weren't doing what I was doing in Australia, I would have joined right now. You are the best recruiter I've ever seen ever. That was the best pitch. And meanwhile, the president is just behind her like this. Like, fucking, you're fucking dead. Like, you're fucking murdered. Like, fuck you. And I'm like, Thank you so much, Kate. I appreciate you. Like, Australia loves you. Yes. And I'm just, like, bowing as I leave. Like, I'm just waiting to be, like, RPF'd. Like, thank you. Thank you. Just peeing my pants. Like, leaving. And, like, the president, like, came in and was like, if you ever fucking recruit one of my celebrities again. I was like, could you put a label on them or something? Like, celebrity, do not talk to them. Do not recruit. Like, how am I supposed to know that these, like, nobodies, like, and P.S., like, Kate, one of the nicest people in the world, honest to God. However, like, she's not that kind of, like, big of a deal. Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like... <sighs> Yes, that's true. Most Americans I mean, have never heard of Kate Sobrano. Oh, but I hear she's a big deal Anyone in Australia. Anyone in America ever heard of Kate? Any, is there anybody from Australia in the chat? How big is she in Australia? Let's be honest. I mean, she's super nice. Her voice is great. But like, you know, she's she's, you know. Yeah, I think Kate's one of those people in Australia where there's actually no one in, in Australia who doesn't know who Kate Sobrano is. It's just, come on. She's not Kylie Minogue. Yeah, no, she was like, yeah. Except Kylie Minogue is known in the U.S. and Kate Sobrano is not. Right? Right? Yeah. I mean, like, come on. Come on now. Uh, all righty. Well, shall we wrap it up there for the uh, for the evening? I know you have something you got to get, got to, get to. I thought like, I'm going to a concert. Yes. yes with my wife. I'm going to go see an actual celebrity, guys. <laughs> nice. Oh, another uh, not name. Kate. Catherine just mentioned. I remember. Ooh. I didn't know Adam was a recruiter. Adam Daniels. Oh yes, he was yes. A Before he became the deputy RPF, I see. Oh, I must be thinking of someone different. Yeah, he was a recruiter for a while, and then I'm trying to remember. There was a, a number of we had a number of recruiters at Celebrity Center that we ran through. Um, I was a recruiter for a hot second. And then I disqualified myself for HCO for the crime of not wanting to be an HCO. <laughs> like literally they got announced at staff meeting. Nora is no longer qualified for HCO because she doesn't want to be there. So we're, we're demoting her to tech. Wasn't this name Wick Alcock mentioned earlier in this stream? Yes, I know that name. Ew. I heard I heard this name mentioned in some video in the last two days, and I can't remember which channel or who said it. Yes, I remember that name, Wick Alcock. Catherine, <laughs> you're gonna have to come on one of these channels one of these days. We're gonna have you know too much tea, honey. We're but, gonna have to talk with you. But when she said he was my junior, is that <laughs> does that mean he was a recruiter or is she just responding to the fact that his name might have been mentioned earlier? I don't know. I think Wick might have been a recruiter. Okay, I'll I'll just ask her afterwards. What was the bosun's name? What was that guy's name who was the bosun for the EPF forever and a day at PAC? Oh, I don't know. Not Ben Monahan. Oh, oh God. Lon Clough, not Long Cloughler. Anyway, I, I mean, you the EPF wasn't my ben. thing. I, don't I recruited Ben. Oh, yeah, I don't want to talk about Ben. He makes me, he makes me rageful. Oh, no, I Ben hate... makes me want to punch all the walls. Don't get me started <laughs> on Ben. <laughs> Um, all right. Shall we wrap it up here? Yes, my friend. 
right. Pam Hubbard. That's who was recruiting me for the ship, Pam Hubbard. <laughs> when I was in high school, I almost arrived before the end of high school. Pam Hubbard. I forgot her name. Talk about evil like the fruits of the devil. Evil. <sighs> Pam Hubbard. All right. So I will one more time show everyone the Oh No Nora channel. Uh-oh. My well, I got to fix my view. There we go. If you're not subscribed to Oh No Nora, what are you waiting for? Get over there right now and hit that subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> um, all right. Of course, people want to throw these in right at the end. We always appreciate this. Pembroke love. My corgi bestows upon you her piggy foot. What does that mean? Oh, does that mean like, what does that mean? Boop. Is it just a little corgi boop? I love that. <laughs> All right. And Lori plays says, y'all, should I take mini Mike to the Frampton concert so he can make noise for baby Davy? Yes, that's a great idea. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to everyone who watches until the very end. And we'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, yeah, love, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe.